Last time we laid down the principles of FM and we talked about how if you run one operator into another using different ratios, you can create different waveforms. But we didn't veer off the path of using integers, aka uh, whole numbers. So I'm gonna start using these diagrams. These should show you all the information you need to know about getting these patches up and running on different FM synths, regardless of their setup. Specifics like the level and the feedback numbers shown might not work exactly the same, but it gives you the general principle. You should be able to adjust them to match your synth. There's plenty of things here we haven't talked about yet, but don't worry, I'll keep them grayed out until we need them. So I've created this quick saw patch. As you can see, when we play, it's telling us we're playing a C4. One of the things we can do is we can go down an octave on most FM synths to a ratio of 0.5. This is just an octave down, so we're getting C3. And it's the same setup as we talked about before with the bandpass setup. So you can see that the second harmonic is slightly stronger. But let's get into slightly more uncomfortable territory. So if we go through bit by bit, you can see we start getting some interesting effects. At 1.25, we're getting something that sounds like it's two octaves down. At 1.33, we're getting something that sounds like an F. At 1.5, we're getting another C, but it's an octave down. At 1.66, again, we're getting an F. At 1.75, we're getting another C. And then we wrap round to two. So let's try that on the other side. effect isn't quite the same. You can see that tuning's pulled away. Again, that tuning is slightly different. But comfortable places like 1.75, we're getting something that sounds consonant. Again, until we wrap around at two. So it perhaps shouldn't come as a surprise that we can get consonant sounds from non-integers because these can be just equivalents of integer ratios. In our example earlier, 1 to 0 0.5 is the same as 2 to 1, which is why it sounds the same as our bandpass examples from the first video. And this is the same at any point we hit something that sounds stable. But the places in between can sound particularly strange. This adds what's called inharmonicity. This is when a sound is produced that has harmonics that are outside the harmonic series. Bells in particular have a lot of inharmonic information, that's why FM synths are renowned for making good bell sounds. A piano is a good example too. The higher strings have to be tuned differently to sound correct to our ear because they contain so much inharmonic information. But on these examples, our modulation level has been constant. On this quick example, the modulator will decay, so just the sound of the unmodulated carrier is left at the end. So if we make the same changes as before, with the modulator set to 1.5, it's gonna decay back to C. But the same is not true if we change the carrier frequency. Well, we'll end up perceiving a G. The transition is almost seamless though, so it's quite interesting to observe. Well, let's explore moving these pitches around with an LFO. So I've got this LFO set up here a speed of 90 and a depth of 15, which is quite shallow. We go through to the LFO screen, I can turn on the LFO to pitch for both these operators, and that will just give us a standard vibrato. As you can see, our tune is moving backwards and forwards. But if we turn it off for operator one, it sounds more or less the same, but if we turn it off for operator two and leave it on for one, we get something a bit different, and the tuner's sort of happy, it's staying in the middle. So this tells us that the modulator determines more of the pitch we hear than the carrier. So here's a more extreme example. I've slowed down the speed and turned up the depth. So this is being routed to both operators. If we turn off the routing to operator one, Definitely not the same as vibrato, but there's a pitched element to it. Whereas this is more of a tonal shift. So I, I think of this as, this is like a tonal wonk. 
and this is like a pitch wonk. So the difference between the two is most obvious when there's lots of modulation coming from a modulator to a carrier. This includes when you're using feedback or just high modulation levels. So while we're talking about the LFO, we might as well have a look at what else we can do with it. I've created this patch. It's a bit more nasally sounding. We're still one-to-one, -one, but I've turned up the modulator level and lowered the feedback. I've changed the LFO speed to 50, but it's not rooted to anything at the moment. But if we go around to the LFO amp modulation tab and turn it up for operator one, in this case, the carrier. You can hear that's just changing the volume over time. So this is what we call tremolo. If we turn it up for operator two, which is the modulator. We get sort of wub wub kind of sounds. This is very similar to routing an LFO to filter. So let's move away from talking about two operators and start talking about four. A nice logical place to start is with this algorithm. So we've got two pairs of two-op synths here, essentially. We can create layers with this. So in this patch, I've just created a saw. It's identical on both the stacks. So it just sounds like a single saw. We go into operator three and mute it. It just gets a bit quieter. So let's go back into operator one. I'm just going to detune this a bit. And I'm going to match that with operator two. So this won't change the tone. We've still just got a saw. If we bring back in operator three. We've got our classic detune saw sound that we can get on any analog synth that's got two saws that we can detune away from each other. But we have more options here. So I'll just mute operator three again and go back into operator one. I'm going to bring this down to plus two and change operator two to minus two. So within a two up system, we've tuned the two operators away from each other. We've got a different type of detune here. Just as with our previous example, it will change rate depending on what part of the key will we play. Getting faster as we go higher up the keyboard. But detuning the operators away from each other sounds quite different to what we saw earlier. This. Versus this. But we can detune each stack by different amounts and detune them away from each other so we can make some quite interesting pad sounds. So this is the pad sound we're going to be looking at. It's already on the Live and Mega because it's one of the presets I made for it. You'll find it in the pad bank and it's the first sound mild pad. This pad was really just an attempt by me to create something that sounded like it would be on Selected Ambient Works by FX Twin. So one of the quirks of the YM2612 is that it had only had a single LFO with a single speed and depth which was shared between amp modulation and pitch modulation. This was shared across the whole chip too, so it made it quite difficult to do vibrato on single voices, especially seeing as the six voices of the chip were split up between different parts of the song. But luckily you could control pitch using software, so that's what everyone did, they just created pitch bends and vibrato in software and it was essentially just like moving a pitch bend backwards and forwards. So this is why there's no vibrato saved in the patch. So typically I'll add a bit of speed and depth to give it a bit of movement. I've also got an, a delay turned on here too. Things aren't quite exactly the same as they are on the reface. On older synths, like I mentioned in the first video, we only have one feedback control. So the two stacks aren't quite the same, but this sound doesn't actually use any feedback at all. So here's how we're gonna recreate that on the reface DX. You can see that the two operator stacks are more or less the same. The modulators build and then drop back to a slightly lower sustain level. This means the tone lifts and then drops back. The two carriers though, lift and stay at a high sustain level. Then the only difference between the different operators is just the detune amounts. So I've gone back to initialize patch again, which sounds like this. And I'm gonna make some edits on the front panel, including changing this algorithm. So we've got two uh, carriers and two modulators. And then I'm gonna change the levels of these. So I'm gonna bring the Modulation up to 110. So we've got that sound. Then I'm going to match that on the other stack. So we've got that. I'm going to turn that off for a second so we just hear the left stack. Then I'm going to detune these two. So I'm going to bring this one down 
by one, and then knock this one up by one. So we just got some very subtle detune between the carrier and modulator. So that's going to move really slowly. So let's change the other stack. We're going to do this with a ratio, just changing it by 0 0.1 is going to make quite a big difference. So what I'm going to do is counter that with quite a lot of detune in the opposite direction. So this is going to be a fine adjustment. So that's not as fast. And then change this to two. So we can slow down that modulation if we want. So all together we're going to sound like this. Next thing I'm going to do is change all these attack rates to 32, just to slow everything down. These are personal preference really, so play around, see what effect you get. So the modulation will fade in as well as the volume. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the releases, just to make them longer. So volume and tonal change will also fade away. Then just on the modulation levels, I'm going to reduce these to 115. So if we go through to an envelope better, so we can see these changes. So on operators 2 and 4, they're going to drop. So this is going to say the same. And then 4 and 2 will have a little drop in them. I'm going to slow the rate down. I chose 53 for whatever reason. So the modulation lifts and then just falls back slightly. So now let's adjust the LFO. I went with 63 for no good reason other than that it sounded nice. I don't think it's going to make much difference to 64, but here we go. So pitch modulation depth of 10. It's going to do that. I decided it sounded quite nice with just one of these turned off. So we're modulating all three apart from this one. Then we just need to turn the effects on. So the delay with the standard settings sounded good to me. So there's our finished pad sound. Um, so I hope you've learned something from this tutorial. Please leave comments, like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. So I'll be back with a third part soon. I'm not quite sure exactly what's going to be in that yet. Possibly we'll look at velocity sensitivity. So thank you very much for watching and cheers.